Hi, my name is Greg Smith. I'm the senior technical trainer here at SMA America. And in today's tech tip video, I'm going to show you the proper methods for installing the Sunny Tri Power Inverter. Installing the Sunny Tri Power is just as easy as installing a regular Sunny Boy string inverter. You won't need any special tools, and what is already in your truck will be perfectly fine for the installations. I have a 24,000 watt model hanging on the wall here. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways on how to mount the Tri Power, but first I'm going to take the cover off and show you the wiring area. The Sunny Tri Power weighs about 150 pounds, so you want to make sure that you use the right mounting hardware for whatever surface it's going to be attached to. It is a two person lift. Now you'll need a three millimeter hex wrench to take this black cover off. And now that we've removed that, we can look and inspect the DC terminals and the AC terminals. And there's a little bit of a difference between them. The DC terminals inside the Tri Power are labeled A positive, A negative, B positive, and B negative. And at the very bottom is the spot where you will land the equipment ground. Now these terminals are labeled that way because there are two MPPT inputs going into this inverter. So regardless of whether you bring the conductors in from the SMA connection unit or your own combiner box or even third party connectors, regardless they will terminate on this terminal. The AC side of the tri power looks a little bit different because we don't use traditional screw terminals. Instead, we're using clamp terminals. So it makes for a, a far quicker installation because you just need to strip off the wire, insert it into the terminal, and then clamp it down. The last thing in the connection area is the LCD screen. Now, this is a non-functional LCD, but it does gather the information from the inverter and send it to the communication card in the back. Now, the reason that we did this is because this inverter is designed for commercial rooftops. And since this will be up on top of a hot roof for 20 plus years, the LCD will be one less thing you have to worry about breaking or having to service in the future. Of course, we always recommend for any SMA installation that you have the installation manual handy. I'm gonna start on the AC side of the Tri Power by stripping a half inch insulation off of my wire and it can be a size 8 or a number 6 conductor that goes into these terminals. Now again, the terminals are a little bit different than what you're normally used to. So what we want to do is fully open each terminal, insert the conductor in, and then firmly push each lever down to make contact with the conductor. Now the benefit of this is that you don't have to worry about torque. You put the conductor in, push it down, and you're done. No torque wrench required. So let's start by lifting all the levers on the AC terminals. Now that the terminals are fully open, I can insert my conductor. Now I've got a piece of conduit just here for demonstration purposes, but you'd feed your conductor through here, and the terminals are clearly labeled on the back plane of the inverter. L1, L2, L3, neutral, and equipment ground. So I'm going to put this first wire in the L1 terminal, just like this. I'm going to push it up in there until it won't go any further. I'm going to clamp it down, just like that. Now those conductors aren't moving an inch. And again, you don't have to worry about torque. Now what I'm going to do is show you what the levers look like when they're not fully open or fully closed. And this is going to cause problems on the installation if you don't follow the instructions on how to securely clamp these things down. So the L1 and L2 conductors are fully shut, but you can see the L3 is not quite down, nor is the neutral. So be very careful when you do the installation that you always make sure the conductors are all the way down. Now for the DC side, we're back to using our trusty screwdriver. A number two will suffice. 
And the conductors that will land in these terminals can be anywhere from a number two to a number eight. Now you want to check the manual, but the proper torque spec for these terminals is 51 inch pounds. So we really recommend that you get a torque screwdriver. Now I've got a piece of conduit here again, just to show you how this would go. And I'm going to connect these two conductors into the A positive and A negative terminals, meaning this string or set of strings will be going into the A channel maximum power point tracker inside the tri-power. So the last thing to do inside the tri-power is to install your communication wire. Now the speed wire module behind the LCD display is factory installed in Denver, Colorado. So all you have to do is run the ethernet from the customer's router or the cluster controller and run it into the speed wire module. Now, if you have multiple tri-powers, then you're just going to daisy chain the tri-powers together. We cover this in another tech tip video. But for now, let me run my ethernet cable up through the conduit and connect it into one of the two ports on the speed wire module. Once the LCD is securely fastened, the only thing left is to put the black cover back on and then commission the system. Now one of the versatile things about the TriPower is the many different ways that you can install it. So in the previous segment we talked about installing the TriPower on a wall or some similar structure. Now here I have an alternate method using commercially available pre-made racking, which you can install the TriPower the connection unit, even the AC disconnect onto this structure. Matter of fact, you could do this on the ground level and then using the eyes, you can crane up the entire unit to the roof and then place it next to the array. I have an SMA DC connection unit mounted underneath this tri-power and it is a combiner box with a DC disconnect. Now we'll take the four screws off using a four millimeter hex wrench the DC disconnect must be in the off position. And then we just lift the cover off, set it off to the side, and now we can see the inside of the connection unit. The connection unit terminals can hold four conductors per each channel, channel A and channel B, for a total of eight inputs. And then there are two inputs that come out the top that go into the bottom of the tri-power. So what I'm going to show you is the proper procedure on how to detect the correct polarity coming into the bottom of the connection unit. It's very easy to do. Once again, turn the DC disconnect off to remove the cover. And then what you're going to do just for safety is open all of the touch safe fuse holders inside the connection unit. The fuses are not included in the fuse holders. At this point, We'll push the black button on the reverse polarity indicator and watch for the lights that are on the top of the indicator. A green light in the middle means everything is good and you have correct polarity on all DC terminals. If you have a red light on the left or on the right side of the connection unit, then that is indicating that there is reverse polarity on either channel A or channel B. When bringing in the conductors to the bottom of the DC connection unit, refer to the manual for proper torque settings and wire size. The DC output terminals going up to the tri-power will be torqued down to 51 inch pounds, just like they are in the DC connection terminals of the tri-power. And the connection unit also shares the same wire size, number two to number eight. Once the cover of the DC connection unit is securely in place, the only thing left to do is to perform the commissioning procedure outlined in the installation manual. And that's all there is to installing the Sunny Tri-Power from SMA. If you'd like to learn more about this inverter, please visit our website at sma-america.com for product information and for training opportunities. My name is Greg Smith. Thank you for watching.